Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to talk about the Soulbind conduits that will be available for Death Knights in the Shadowlands. These have been data mined and they haven't been actually added to beta yet, so I couldn't test them out. But I just wanted to go over them real quick and just give my opinion on what they are and if I think they're a good Soulbind uh, conduit or not. So if you don't know, Soulbind conduits will be similar to Relics in Legion. You'll be able to equip 3 or 4 depending on what soulbind you pick, and that's going to depend on um, which covenant you have, and then within each covenant you have three different soulbinds that you can pick from. One thing to also mention is that they recently said that conduits would not be destroyed whenever you use them like they initially planned. They're looking for a semi-permanent solution um, where you can swap conduits, but it won't be exactly as easy as just popping a tome. With that out of the way, let's go over the actual conduits. There's three types of conduits that you can equip. There's potency ones, which are essentially DPS conduits. There's endurance ones that are tank conduits. And there's finesse ones that are typically either like utility or defensive conduits. So the first one that we have here is Accelerated Cold. That is a potency conduit. And it causes your Empower Rune Weapon to recharge 5% faster and haste amount from Empower Rune Weapon is increased by 10%. On paper, this might sound good, but Empower Rune Weapon already syncs up with Breath of Syndragosa. Well, I guess not anymore because they changed the cooldown. Um, but maybe you can get your Breath um, or your Empower Rune Weapon down for like an Obliterate build or an Ice Cap build potentially. But honestly, this is one of the few conduits that I'm actually not all that sure about. Second one is Biting Cold, another potency conduit. Remorseless Winter deals 2% increased damage to enemies it hits, stacking up to 10 times. So this just increases your Remorseless damage quite a lot. Um, so 20% if it's stacked all the way, that is pretty good. It's essentially like a second gathering storm, but this one might be pretty powerful for Frost. Then we have Blood Bond, which is an Endurance Conduit. Rune Tap heals you and your party for 5% of your maximum health. This one could be extremely interesting in Mythic Plus, because Blood Decays already have a naturally high health pool. So whenever you Rune Tap, you heal your entire party and yourself for 5% of your maximum health. That combined with like Vampiric Blood, for example, can mean an actual significant amount of healing to your entire party. And especially if you equip the legendary that gives your entire party vampiric blood, um, I feel like there's quite a bit of potential for some pretty insane healing coming out of blood decays there. Uh, next we have chilled resilience. This is a finesse conduit. Icebound 42 school down is reduced by 15 seconds, and that's just flat. So this is just a defensive conduit. Icebound is a pretty long cooldown. I personally don't like it too much. Um, I wish this was AMS, to be honest. But either way, it's, it's a decent one for just defensive purposes. Then we have Embrace Death, that's a potency conduit. Uh, Sudden Doom increases the damage of your next death coil by 40%. So this one actually synergizes a little bit with the Unholy Talent that gives us increased Sudden Doom procs and uh, allows us to charge up or st store up to two Sudden Doom procs. Um, so that might make this conduit a little bit better, or this conduit might make that talent a little bit better, but I'm still not sure if it's going to be enough to take that over Soul Reaper. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, next we have Eradicating Blow, that's another potency conduit. Obliterate increases the damage of your next Frost Strike by 10%, stacks up to two times. Kind of interesting. Um, with Breath of Syndragos, I don't see this being used too much. But with either an Ice Cap build or like an Obliteration build, um, this conduit actually does have some potential. Next we have Eternal Hunger, another potency conduit for Unholy. Dark Transformation's duration is increased by 5 seconds. That's it. So Dark Transformation is normally, um, well there's going to be legendaries that you can extend the time of your Dark Transformation. 
um, there's legendary that gives you and your ghoul some attack speed during dark transformation. So this conduit kind of has secondary interactions with items that um, we will be getting in a Shadowlands. Then we have Fleeting Wind, which is a finesse conduit. This advance grants you additional 10% movement speed over the first three seconds. So essentially, you just get a little bit faster. Um, this one is all right, nothing special. Then we have Hardened Bone, which is an endurance conduit. While Lichborn is active, the damage you take is reduced by 5%. Currently in BFA, Lichborn is a uh, is the same as Iceborne Fortitude, you just get super slow during it. So potentially, if you stack enough of these conduits, you can actually make Lichborn into a decent defensive cooldown as well. Uh, then we have Insatiable Appetite, which is an Endurance Conduit. Death Strike's minimum healing is increased by 1%. Um, so this just has some good synergy with some of the Death, um, the death Strike legendaries, like the one that refunds runic power whenever your death strike heals you for at least 10% of your maximum health. So this will just increase your death strike healing a little bit. Uh, then we have Meat Shield, which is an endurance conduit, increases the duration of your dancing rune weapon by 3 seconds, and while active, your parries increase your maximum health by 1%, stacking up to 2 times for 15 seconds. So 2% parry is not all that interesting, but getting an extra 3 seconds on your DRW, I feel like is pretty important. DRW is great not only offensively, but defensively as well. And hopefully they're going to make a few changes. Uh, I'll talk about that in my Blood Decay video um, to kind of make DRW a little bit more of a meaningful cooldown. Then we have Reinforced Shell, which is an Endurance Conduit. Anti-Magic Zone's radius is increased by 10% and the duration is increased by 1 second. I doubt there's going to be any situation where you need a longer duration Anti-Magic Zone. Um, and also the whole radius thing. I really wish that this would have increased its potency. So maybe instead of absorbing 10% it would, or 20% it would be 30%. Or even if it's not that much, if it would be like a 5% damage difference or something along that lines. Um, but I'm not sure. Like, I don't see how a 10% increase in radius would be all that beneficial. Then we have Spirit Drain. It's a finesse conduit. Successfully interrupting an enemy with Mind Freeze get, grants 10 runic power. Again, this one immediately says Breath of Sindragosa to me. It meant a plus on bosses that you can interrupt. Whenever you land a kick, you just get 10 runic power. So every 14 or 15 seconds, uh, if there's a kick up, you take it similar to Demon Hunters and you get resources from it. Then we have Unending Grip, which is a finesse conduit. Death Grip slows enemy movement speed by 25% um, for until cancelled. So I don't know what that means, but we'll just have to see. 25% slow whenever you Death Grip is think pretty good um but we do have chains of ice which is a lot better <laughs> uh, and then the last one here is withering plague which is a potency conduit hard strike uh, deals 10 percent increased damage to enemies infected by blood plague so just a, a damage increase overall on hard strike um between all the on defensive conduits this is like the offensive blood dk conduit Right, before I wrap up this video, let's talk a little bit about which my favorite conduits are and why conduits are going to be such an important part of Shadowlands. So for Frost, some of the conduits are pretty good, like the Remorseless Winter one is pretty decent. The Empowered Rune Weapon one I don't see being used too much. Uh, for Unholy, the Embrace Death conduit might be pretty good. That increases the damage of your next death coil whenever Sun Doom procs. But other than that, none of them really stand out for Unholy to me personally. Uh, Blood seems to have the best conduit options so far. Uh, the one that increases Death Strike's minimum healing, the one that increases your Dancing Rune Weapon duration, the one that heals your entire party and yourself whenever you Rune Tap. These are all pretty good conduits in my opinion. Um, so I really hope that they add some more Unholy and Frost specific ones because otherwise this is looking a little grim so far. So looking at the actual conduit system and how it interacts with our soul binds, it's a fairly complex issue. 
because you will have to pick a covenant. Within that covenant, you need to pick the correct uh, person to soul bind with. You can swap these, but it's going to be more difficult to swap your conduits over. So it's kind of an important decision. Uh, for example, if I picked Pelagos here as a Kyrian, my first choice would be a potency or a finesse conduit slot. So typically, the potency path leads down to the most DPS, but the issue is that that's not even always the case. Um, a lot of the times, you will see that you will need to go like a defensive talent row to get to a good soul bind. By that, you give up a potency conduit and you end up having to use a defensive one. So it's going to be a super complex issue because you can't just equip any conduit in any slot. So it, you need to factor into decision what soul bind trait you're aiming for and what soul bind conduit it actually has on that path. So I think that's going to be a pretty complex issue for most of the classes until um, a decent amount into the expansion where people start figuring things out. But yeah, currently the way conduits interact with our soulbind talent tree is, I think, a little bit finicky and should, um, should be looked at a little bit. Because in a lot of these rows, you have like triple damage soulbind traits. And I'll go over those in separate videos. Um, and out of those, there's always one that's situationally best. But you can't always go down to that one because maybe there's a finesse conduit over it. So you're not going to be able to actually get even more damage by equipping a potency conduit above it. So yeah, I'm interested to see how this actually plays out. Um, and hopefully there's going to be some iterations on how conduits are obtained, um, if they're destroyed or not, which as far as they said, they, have, they won't be destroyed, but it will be kind of hard to swap them over. They are not entirely sure what they're going to do that um, with that system yet. So yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions about the Soulbind conduits, uh, you can leave them in the comment section below. Or also let me know if you liked any of those, um, if you have any ideas for some new conduits. Because at this point, I feel like they're still waiting on implementing a few, especially for um, Unholy and Frost. But yeah, again, thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.